Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Thursday, May 25th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember everyone, you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Nathan, how are you doing today? I'm doing not so bad. Yeah, not so bad? Yeah. Yeah? There is a, there is a potluck at, at work today, so I am completely full. That That's good, that's good. I found out that there's, uh, I don't know if they're limited, but there's um, new M&Ms that are coffee nut, and oh my god. That sounds dangerous. It's so goddamn delicious. I got three king-size bags, and they're already gone. I take it you're not allergic to them? No, I'm not. That's good, that's good. It's it's the best. You would um, be extremely sad if you were. <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, I would be completely fucking sad. Um, and, uh, and, and I got an idea for, for a D and D campaign for Fridays that I'm going to be uh, playing with some friends. What's that? Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you at the end for, as my thing of the day, cause oh, I can't, okay. I don't really have a thing of the day. So I'll tell you guys the story, the, the ideas that I have for the story. Oh, all right then. Should we just get into the news then? Sure. Sure. All right. Let's do this. Ten. The world's most sensitive dark matter detector is now up and running. This was submitted by Jazza420 to our space. Jazza420. All right. Hey. So we have built and assembled and turned on a dark matter detector. And it's been operating yeah. for about a month. And you want to know how much dark matter it's detected? Uh, zero? Yeah, zero. Absolutely so, zero. Because we don't. Then how do we know if it's working? Well, because. <sighs> we, we don't officially even know if dark matter exists. So we're just guessing. Well, this could be just like uh, ectoplasm. Well, because the idea is is EKGs and shit that with the way that the universe exists, dark matter has to exist because it would have to take up the space between everything that doesn't take up space, essentially. So, like out in the vacuum of space, there is not gas out there. But something has to be there, because there can't be nothing. This isn't the dark crystal. There can't just be nothing. So Are you sure? <laughs> no. <laughs> but Apparently, it's literally nothing. But they believe, then, that it's antimatter, dark matter. It's, it is on a completely different spectrum from where we are. It's literally like a negative, like for a photo. It's everything that we aren't. And that's what fills up the... Successful. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> That's what fills up the space that we don't, essentially. And they believe dark matter exists because they can see the way that the believed substance that is dark matter affects the gravita gravity of entire galaxies because they have to look at it on that massive of a scale to be able to see any inclination that it exists. Mm -hmm. And the way that they are wanting to test it is that they have this thing deep underneath the Earth, submerged in water, surrounded by this special fluid to limit radiation because all of the everything submits a very minute amount of radiation, but that makes it impossible to sense dark matter because that is the essence of what actual matter is. So they have it submerged and deep and watching this fluid because any time that essentially dark matter, antimatter, touches real matter, it'll create a very small little reaction. This is, they're calling them fireworks that are created by weakly interacting massive particles. So that basically just what happens when a piece of dark matter touches real matter goes pop. And if they take away all of the radiation, all of the energy, all of everything, then if anything were to happen, because dark matter can be created at any point in time, by anything because it's it, it's a uh, dark matter is supposed to exist within everything because it takes up the space in between atoms like between the electrons and the protons and stuff because there's always something there at least that's the idea behind it so if that happens in this monitoring tank then we can see it if we're lucky all right well here's hoping we catch that really lucky like percentage yep I don't even know what the, the fucking percentage of finding it is. It's low, super low. So we're just going to have to sit there with it on for a long while, just waiting. 
I mean, it's going to eventually get it, right? Well, here's the thing is that the, the, the scientists were like, they're super excited about all of the excellent data they're accumulating. And I'm like, data on what? You, you said it's nothing's happened. Like, what's this data? What are I, you? I don't. What? Damn. I don't understand. What they'll, is, they'll, they have data, all right? That that's true. Probably like, like data no, bytes no, like, of it. Like da like data from Star Trek. Oh, is that where they're hiding him? Secret underground facility full of water. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Does data doesn't have to breathe, right? No. Oh, so he's I... fucking. He's a goddamn hologram. No, oh, no, he's like a robot. Isn't he? <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. I haven't watched that Star Trek in a hologram. long time. He's just a projection. Yeah. <laughs> no, I believe he's a cyborg or something like that. Something like that. Android. Ro maybe ro maybe you don't want to get his his internals all wet. Maybe so. not. I don't know. But don't either know. way, if this is our best shot at discovering dark matter. Oh god damn it! I got an eyelash in my eyeball. Stop that. Oh, it hurt. Quit it. All right, just keep going. Okay, but uh, so that's all this story is: is that we built a thing that I'll flush it out with Rockstar. <laughs> oh, dude! Oh, god! Oh, no! Don't do that. It's a fruit punch. It's all sticky. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if we can discover dark matter, this is how they believe that we're going to do it. I mean, yay! I hope so. That's cool. It'd be cool. Yeah. It then we can harness dark matter. Well, that's even more difficult because if you ever had a like if you could actually have a piece of dark matter then you it wouldn't be allowed to touch anything that isn't dark matter because as soon as it touched actual matter they would negate each other and you'd go pop see that see the issue here wait is it just like pops out of existence or is there like a bang or something um think of it the best way i can think of it is think of like if you have a very powerful base and a very powerful acid and they touch each other and they turn into water they negate each other and and that's what happens is one negates the other but okay. the, the the idea is is that but when when it happens it they it just fizzles like kind of it kind of lets off of like a energy? spark like a little bit of energy yeah okay so if we get if we do that enough then it can power spaceships i like it you just have to have dark matter reactors that make dark matter or you don't you don't make dark matter you would just pull it out of the void all right so like every breaking every, every break in technology has some quirks a Andrew, that, that's a good way to put it. Andrew in the timeline, in, in the timeline, in the chat room says it's like touching yourself. <laughs> <Timeline>. in, in, <laughs> it, it, well, he says timeline. It's like touching yourself in an alternate timeline. Yeah, if, depending on how, what belief system you go in terms of timelines, that's exactly how it works. You just cease to exist, but you don't cease to exist. They just negate each other out to create energy that then burns into different forms of matter and antimatter, and it's stupid science. <laughs> That's that's weird. Yep that that was hard to understand, much less explain, and I probably still got it wrong. Goddamn. Nine. Mexico politician mocked for campaign hashtag hashtag campaign hashtag. <laughs> yep. His his campaign hashtag is hashtag campaign hashtag. <laughs> Well, a correction. It, it's in Mexico, so it's hashtag, hashtag campaña. But it literally oh. just means campaign hashtag. Oh, that fucked me up. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is like getting a good hashtag that goes viral <laughs> is very difficult. <laughs> and by being mocked, he's getting tons of free publicity. So it technically worked. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm gonna put this right up next to Bodie McBoatface. This is submitted by Mania for Beatles to R, not the Onion. Yeah, so people just started mocking this politician who's running for governor in Mexico, and because uh, they found it to be a um, uh, terrible joke, because or like uh, some people are like maybe it's a mistake, maybe they forgot to like change something on the template that they submitted. Nope, it was intentional. After after the waves of mockery, uh, he has settled on a new slogan. And his new slogan, Nathan, are you ready for it? Are you ready for his new slogan? No, not yet. 
Oh, okay. His new slogan, instead of hashtag campaign, uh, hashtag campaign hashtag, is now because of my mustache. <laughs> oh God, we're, lo oh, no. we're losing Nathan. Oh God. So uh, yeah. Yeah, there's the butter. Hashtag campaign hashtag. New new slogan. Because of my mustache. We need to move on or I'm gonna fucking die. Ah, oh, you put it up on the thing. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna actually physically die. <laughs> and see, he, he does have quite a nice mustache. Finally. Perfect. Yes, death. Oh my god, life. that is a gorgeous mustache. Congratulations, oh, God, sir. everyone's going to hear my air horn laugh for fucking <laughs> decades. Oh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Eight. Uh, I fucking hate you so much, you goddamn ass. FCC revived net neutrality rules. Re Wait. <laughs> FCC revived. Oh, no, I'm going to do it. Take two. FCC revised net neutrality rules reveal cable company control of process. This was submitted by Vriska1 to our technology. So, first off, if you weren't previously aware, the current FCC chair, uh, Ajit Pai, was once Verizon's associate general counsel. And all of the changes that are being put forth through the FCC directly benefit Verizon immensely, including some of the things that they have lobbied for are verbatim in the revised changes. Okay. Okay. So, dude used to work for Verizon, gets appointed as chair of the FCC, and then does everything he can to help Verizon. Makes sense. Right. There's not a whole lot else to say on that. Just people want people to be aware that basically all of the changes that are being conducted through the FCC are changes that are specifically engineered to help the internet service providers and not the consumer. It's literally against you against yeah. everyone yeah it, it there is zero benefit to you in any way whatsoever so you guys should do something about it same with us we should do something about it i feel like we're helping little by little by at least trying this. to make people aware right but i feel like we need to do more i feel like i don't know well see that's the problem though is that with the administrative procedure act there's only so much that you can do you can hoop and holler and yell but they don't have to listen to it and so i mean the most that like i, I already submitted my comments to the fcc and so did millions of other people there's there's not much else that as a populace we can do we don't vote for who goes in the fcc they're appointed so I don't know what else we can do. You just keep appealing the process? Maybe. And I mean, if, if that's what ends up happening is that it just gets locked in votes and litigation and different processes and committees forever, then whatever. Then we'll just roll with what we have for now. Until we get a new president and he puts a stop to it. Yeah, that's probably what will happen now. I mean, that's what they tried to do a lot with Obama is they just tried to just freeze everything he tried Rail to do. Railroad him, you know? It's not even railroad. Just freeze it. Make it where he, he – just try and hold out as long as you can so that it never gets, goes through. Yeah. So. And, you know, some people agree with those tactics. And, and if it comes down to it, if it's an important situation, sure, like – this is an important situation. This is benefits no one. Yeah. So. Seven. President Trump shoved Montenegro Prime Minister at NATO. This is submitted by 75,000 Tokel to Our World News. So. Yeah, I watched this. Yeah, oh th my goodness. This video what has been fucking, shared all over the place. Oh. oh my god. <sighs> we don't need the audio because it's only the video that matters. So I'm I'm gonna get the video up here and going for everybody. It should oh, hopefully be then on. I'll get to I'll get to watch it on the stream in like an hour. <laughs> like an hour, you mean in like a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, like a couple of decades. So but anyway, now <sighs> The, the thing huh. is, is that they had already described and uh, apparently according to the White House and everyone else at NATO, the NATO Foundation, they had already said 
that the uh, the the picture because they, they had already got a standing order of how people were going to stand where where who was going to stand where in what order and stuff like that for the upcoming picture. Now the problem is though is that even if Trump was supposed to be in front, he uh he he. he, he He's a little bit aggressive trying to get up to the front. A lot of people have compared. Was this before or after the that uh, handshake? Uh, th I have no idea. Because he had a, he had a very aggressive handshake uh, sometime during that day. Probably, I believe it. Uh, it was oh man, I forget who it was with. It was with someone important. I'll uh, I'll look that up. Uh, the you mean the one where he lost? Yeah. Uh, the the one where the other dude crunched his hand. Yeah. Yeah, that was with the uh, the new president of France. Oh, uh, uh, Macron. Yeah, M Macron. A white knuckled handshake. Yeah, to the point that it destroyed Trump's hand. Oh, dude, I bet. But yeah, so now a lot of people are. This is one of the problems that I have with Trump is that we talk about every last thing he does because all dude, of it he is tap the fuck out though. Is so bloody childish. Like, people have been comparing this to, like, a, fi a five-year-old trying to fight to the front of the line at school. I, I mean, that's, I, that's kind of what he's doing. Well, the thing is, is look at him after he gets in front of him. Like, he pops his suit and is like, oh, yeah, look at me. I'm in front. I'm awesome. He just wants to be seen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that's Trump's entire life is just wanting to be Ketchup seen. Ketchup on the steak. Thank you, Andrew, for bringing that up. This man is a monster. Get him out of office. He, he puts ketchup on his steak. Sure. How could you? I don't. I don't know. We trusted you to lead America, and he, you go and put ketchup on your steak as your favorite dish. Yeah, whatever. Either oh, way, people are no, heavily criticizing this action. And I mean, the, the other guy Next didn't. Still, tell me he'll like it. Well done. The well, maybe he does. I don't know. Politely. Yet firmly ask them to leave. Thank you. Throw them out of office. I mean, <laughs> 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 impeach them. The other dude took it pretty well. I mean, see, here's the thing like, when I look at it, it's a pretty forceful move, but I don't, I, I don't know. I don't see this as not only, not only did he pop his collar, but he threw his finger at that person, at that lady. I don't know who she is. Dude, he, he, that's how he talks, though. I know, it's incredibly rude. I, Stop throwing your Cheetos at me, man! Your fucking Cheeto puffs. It, 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 well, I mean, they're 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 more like they're not puffs, man. They're like baked Cheetos because they're all tiny and spindly. I mean, yeah, okay, he's got tiny hands. That's that's fair. No, he's just got big cuffs, you know. Sure. They dwarf his hands. Either way, people are making a very large deal out of it. I kind of understand. Unlike his why. hands. <laughs> at the same time though I, I, I seriously feel like there are bigger problems to worry about than him just being a child and wanting to get to the front of the pack that, that's fair but it's still incredible you, you have to shine it's it's like it's like bad animal behavior you have to point it out to them tell them it's bad oh sure but I am more concerned with because I with the defense spending that was being discussed that's fair right that's an important thing but the way we are perceived by our our elected official to the rest of the world is, is an a disgrace. Thing too. That we we it's, already know. They already know. Right, and this is highlighting it more. I, I I hope though that people understand that Trump, while the face of America as the president, is not representative of what all Americans are. No, I am nothing like him. Maybe. And, and I, I think I in hope. this day and age, more people are privy to that information. Yeah, definitely. That's because of the internet. Can you imagine if Six. Trump was was oh go ahead sorry can you imagine if Trump was elected during a time where we didn't have the internet I don't want to think about it of course I wouldn't have been alive so <laughs> 6 federal appeals court upholds block on Trump's travel ban hey this was submitted by guacamole fanatic hey that's my soulmate to our politics the guacamole fanatic yeah i fucking love guac uh, i'm not terribly big on it I love making homemade guac, too. It's a lot of fun. Either way, so, I mean, after the judge in Hawaii, you know, turned over Trump's travel ban, they appealed it and went to a federal appeal court. That federal appeal court has now said, no, we agree with what the judge said. We do believe that this is wrong. This is not protecting the country. This is banning Muslims, and that is directly what you are trying to do. This is not constitutional. Therefore, it cannot be passed. You are not allowed to have this travel ban because of you are specifically targeting Muslim countries. 
and stop it. The White House has already responded, saying they intend to take it all the way to the Supreme Court, which is already the next step. So one more round. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's get this completely shut out. Well, and here's the thing, though. Like with the two that we've had already, if they do take it to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court goes, yeah, no, you can't do that, they're just going to reword it, add another country, remove a country, or target someone else and go through this whole process again. That That's fine. We'll just keep shutting it down. We'll keep swatting it away. It keeps the judges uh, busy, you know, it keeps them on, the, on their toes. They have so much more important stuff to do, but at the same time, I guess it's really important to keep Trump in line. Yeah, definitely. Five. Not welcome here. Thousands march against Trump in Belgium. This was submitted by Silence HR to our news. Yep, so it's something, I don't remember the exact number, 7,000, 9,000, 8,000, 9,000. 9,000 people attended a rally in Belgium, the majority of which are dressed in uh, Statue of Liberty costumes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and chanting things against Trump, uh, such as, if you don't want Trump in Belgium, clap your hands. You're going to make me air horn laugh again. Jesus or, Christ. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Donald Trump has got to go. Man, these are like wrestling chants. Yeah, well, I mean, he I mean, Trump, you know, what, what was that the brawl of the billionaires? He, Is that what it was yeah, called? Yeah, he was he was in wrestling. That's right. That's a oh, fight. He elected Linda McMahon for fucking treasury. Or is it treasury? No, it's small business. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, this is and several of them wanted to point out that this is not them protesting America. This is them protesting Trump. Because, Specifically that man. Yep. And because the thing that has a lot of people upset is because of not because of Trump acting like a child, but because of the direction that Trump wants to go with things, specifically when it comes to defense spending. One of the things they discussed at NATO, tying into our last story, was that Trump wants all countries to put 2% of their gross domestic product towards defense spending. So that would mean everyone needs to put 2% of all their money in a pot to help pay for national security or worldwide security, international security, whatever, whatever word I'm needing. And the, a lot of these protesters are like, instead of putting more money towards war, why don't you put more money towards peace and helping pay for, you know, the sick schools? you know, buildings, roads, foundation, your own people, instead of trying to push money towards killing other people. Which is understandable, and I completely agree with in all oh, ways. Yeah, no, no, completely. I, Everyone's well-founded in their ability to protest. These people peacefully protested. Well, this was also because Trump, on the campaign trail, called Belgium a hellhole. Yeah, he uh, he said a lot of rude things about a lot of other countries, too. Yep, but... I'm surprised he's allowed in a lot of them in Europe. Well, I don't... It, President of the United States, point, kinda, international yeah, allies, like... They kind of have to, in some ways. I mean, it, it's kind of like, you know, if you have, like, one cousin you don't like, but one you do, but they always come to visit at the same time. Yeah, you're just like, hey, uh... It's really nice hanging out with you, Stan, but I'm going to play with Mark for, like, the entire day. Let's cool it on this wanting to hang business, you know? So, uh, Andrew in the chat room says, yeah, but they still want the money. They just want it to pay for them. I, 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 y yes, I don't see a problem with that logic. I mean, that's what taxes are supposed to be for, is to take care of you. That's why taxes pay for teachers and police officers and firefighters to, you know, keep the nation running and protecting you and growing. Now, I also f believe that defense spending is important because even if ever, even if you have a lot of the world powers advocating for peace, there are still going to be people like North Korea and the Islamic State that are advocating for violence. And you, you have to shut that down. And... While I would love the idea of being able to talk out of it, that is not always an option. I believe that it should be an option that is taken more often, but it's not always an option because humans are stupid. It's true. It, it, that, that's what it comes down to is that humans are stupid. But either way, I mean... So yeah. We all get to agree that that we can go to the moon and set up colonies there where terrorism is not non-existent. Until it is. <laughs> then you just move on to Mars and you just keep Four. going. 
GOP busted using cable lobbyist net neutrality talking points in an email from GOP leadership. This is submitted by Maxwell Hill to our technology. Yep, so the GOP, the GOP leadership disseminated an email that included a toolkit of completely misleading or just outright false talking points that, among other things, were an attempt to portray net neutrality as anti-consumer. So going back to that net neutrality stock, the, the Republican... Stock? Stock. Uh, the Republican Party... Because I don't even I it's difficult for me to understand why, but they want Cause money. Money talks. I yeah I guess yeah that money makes, gets you to talk in certain ways. I also feel like a large number of Republicans right now, after dealing with eight years of Obama, just want to have their name on something that passes. I, that's also fair. Like, I don't have a problem with Republicans, but I, I I just have a problem with the bipartisan system actually, because so often it's just about what your party gets to do and preventing the other party from getting to do anything. Yeah, it, it comes down to being a hyper-competitive game of, like, football. Yeah, not even football, like, tug-of-war. Sure. It's just who can pull harder and yell louder. It's it's become a sport. I guess. But either way, so right now... The, the, a sport for old men. They have disseminated this entire information and, and about women, and how women. to fight the people who are trying to retain net neutrality. That's stupid. And it's Why, oh God. It's specifically it's... engineered to falsely lead people to believe that net neutrality is anti-consumer and is good for everyone. I can only hope that the Republican leaders who saw this memo or They're whatever, the ones that sent it. Right. No, no. I know. But, but like, that doesn't mean... That all the Republicans Republicans got together and wrote this memo. I'm oh, saying sure. like they sent it out to all the other Republicans, and I hope that those Republicans that are seeing this memo, who did not write it but who are getting it, realize that that is stupid, and vote for the people and not for the companies. Sure, we'll see what happens. I mean, and it's not an instantaneous like yes or no goes thing. This is going to be a long drawn out fight that we'll probably have to keep talking about for several months. Yeah. But we will continue to I, I mean, do so. It keeps us in business. Well, and also, like, one of the things that I want to point out people point out to people is, like, so we do have a website, even though we just never advertise it. It's up there in the corner of the video. I did that. Uh, yeah, it's Mjolnir.media. Wow, that was not English. Mjolnir.media slash I read it. It's where the podcast has a website to sit at. And the idea is it's, like, we talk out against cable companies a lot because we don't like what they're doing if they wanted to try to silence us right now they're not allowed to do so but if this goes through they could literally just turn off access to our website gci could just go all of them could just go uh, black flag this one because we don't like it because they talk against us that, yeah and and that would you, be you don't want that because that means if you are trying to do something on the internet and you piss them off then boom, you're completely shut out. You're fucking done. Yep, they can just block whoever they want on the entire internet. Oh, Philip DeFranco's talking shit about us? Bro. Sorry, guys. No one gets to see him ever again. What's that? We don't agree with Fox News? Just turn off access to all of Fox News. Yep. Oh, wait. Fox News, you want people to get to you? Well, you're going to need to give us $10 billion. If you give it's, us $10 billion, like... we'll open up access to your website again. It's crazy mad extortion. Yeah, I'm, and it would be completely legal under the, the new rules. Oh, my God. Yep. This is, this is Three. Such... Tripe? Yeah. Yeah. A Chinese company is offering free training for U.S. coal miners to become wind farmers. Oh, this is submitted by Mavia to our Futurology. This is one of the things that you said, like, well, let's do this, right? Yeah. So in Carbon County, Wyoming, Carbon County literally named because it has the largest deposits of coal in the United States. Oh, son of a bitch. Um, they've been closing down coal mines because no one wants coal anymore. I mean, we still it's, have lots of true. oil going on, but coal is just falling down through the floor. And this Chinese company, which has an American arm called Goldwind, they are just... It's free training. Just sign up, and we will train you to be wind farm technicians and then give you jobs helping to build and then maintaining the wind farms. That's amazing. Yep. They're, they're, why, is the why is a Chinese company 
trying to create more jobs in America. Money. Uh, in a positive way Money. than the U.S. presidency. Well, here – oh. <laughs> Be, uh. Again, because money. Because Trump gets money from oil and these people get money from wind. And there's tons of it. Oh, I know. But that's why. I mean, that's that's why Trump – like, Trump has investments in coal and oil and stuff like that and friends that are invested in it. So he wants to see those biz those markets do well, whereas Goldwind is completely dedicated to wind energy. That's uh, – a and, and and it's everlasting. It's not like you're going to mine all of the wind. It's not like all these wind turbines are going to harvest literally all of the wind up. If anyone tries to make that argument – just, it's happened. Just, just, just get, get out. Just, just go. I don't. It's all right. No, no, don't worry. Eventually, we'll be able to harvest um, enough birds that we will have them all on ropes and have them try to flap away, and they'll cause enough wind gusts through their flapping to power cities, and then we let them rest for the night so that all of it's shut off, so that we lose the pollution that we would po possibly obtain through, um, through running things. What are they, Pidgeys? You got some Pidgeotos up Just in there? Just gusts over and over again. Two. Motherfucking Pidgeots going hurricane. Montana special election candidate Greg G Giant Fort <laughs> body slams reporter. Oh, God. He's like a wrestler. That's a wrestling name. Giant Fort. I'm pretty sure I said it wrong. Gianforte. I don't think that's right either. Giant Fort. Either way, would you like to say who it's submitted by? Uh, Synapse Bonfire to our news. Oh my god, this guy, is, he's a fucking D&D &D character. So, a spot in Congress opened up. And I, 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 it doesn't say why. I mean, there's lots of possibilities. But either way, he's being charged with assault. And here's why. <laughs> he is currently slated to get elected in this special election. He is winning in the polls by more than 15%. Days away from the election. The election is, I, I believe, tomorrow. And a reporter from The Guardian comes up to him and asks him his opinion on the AHCA bill that's going to replace Obamacare. And he tells... Trump care, right? Yeah, whatever you want to call it. I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> and the and this politician tells him, like, you know, you should talk to my press guy. And instead of, you know, being like, oh, okay, the reporter says, no, I want to hear it from you. What is your opinion on blah, 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 blah. The politician, and this has been confirmed by multiple sources now, goes up to him. Hits the phone out of his face, grabs the reporter by both hands on the neck, grabs him and spins him and throws him onto the ground, jumps on top of him and begins punching him, saying, I'm tired of your guys' crap. I'm tired of you. Holy shit. And originally, like, the reporter, like, after, like, getting up off the ground after being beat in the face was like, dude, you just assaulted me and broke my glasses over me asking you a question. I'm calling the cops, and I think I need a hot, I think I need an ambulance. And so he releases this information because he's a reporter. Like, I mean, you can't assault a reporter. Like, you, you shouldn't assault anybody. Oh, no. But of all the people to assault, don't assault a reporter because they're to be like, I have a I, platform. I remember reading about this earlier. Didn't he say that uh, what happened was the the reporter grabbed his wrist and tried to yank at him? Yep. But guess who was in the room? Who? Fox News. And Fox News went, uh, that, that's, that's not true. Uh, that's not what happened. You straight up beat the ever-living Jesus out of that man. Oh my god. So, he attacks a reporter, lies about what happened when he attacked the reporter, gets found out that he's a liar, everyone dr immediately drops their endorsements from him, of like, we don't want this guy to be elected anymore, we don't want to be associated with someone who attacks reporters for no reason, and now he's being charged with assault. Maybe we'll finally get a politician in jail. Well, here's the interesting thing, is the election... Is, Out on bail. Well, the election is tomorrow. He could still get elected. He had such a huge margin of victory. 
even if he lost from his position even if he lost over 10 percent of all of the votes (laughs) he would still win but this then might he be can get impeached from his position for not being able to withhold it or not being able to hold it while going being to in... jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what might happen is he gets elected and then gets indicted. Yeah. And then it'd be like special victims unit. Bum bum. Um, I don't I don't think this falls under special victims, but no, no, it's probably criminal intent. May- maybe or just straight up law and order. Yeah, probably just straight up Law and Order. Yeah, I'm sure they're already trying to write their next episode for it. Yeah, I used to watch a lot of that when I was a kid because my grandparents. Dude, I watched a ton of SVU when I was young because of my mom. I watched SVU, Criminal Intent, Regular Law and Order, NCIS, oh God. CSI, 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 uh, Las Vegas. Well, the, uh, yeah, that, that, that is that is CSI. Well, uh, no, there's, uh, I'm sorry, Miami. There you go. As well. Yeah! Um, <laughs> uh, we watched a lot of, uh, fuck, uh, Bones. I didn't watch much Bones. My sister watches Bones. Anyway, on with the news. One. Police investigating the Manchester Arena bomb attack have stopped sharing information with the United States after leaks to the media. This is submitted by Ninja Disco Jesus to our world news. So you're fucking leaking everything. Yeah, and that's a problem. So the we're fucking we have so many holes in our tire that is America. The the UK officials have been it's a joint investigation. People are like it's a terrorist attack. Let's get all of the minds on this. The problem is is that police evidence photos that were apparently shared with trusted minds in the United States turned up in the New York Times. Oops. Yeah, this upset a lot of people because... Uh, oh, I bet. Like, this isn't Trump. This is someone else. We don't even know who. And mm. so, mm, the U.S. ambassador to the U.K., so our guy that's over there, um, he's like, I, I, I condemn this. I unequivocally condemn this. This is this should not happen. This is a, break, a breach it's- of trust. Um mm-hmm. The UK Prime Minister Theresa May has come out and said that. Uh, what, what, what were her exact words? Hang on, let me find them because it wasn't. Uh, they 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 weren't. Hmm. Theresa May said that she would tell Donald Trump at the NATO meeting that all of their shared intelligence must remain secure, and that's all she said. Which, I mean, people are like, is that a threat, Theresa May? And it's like, what if it is? We're kind of breaking all the rules. We it's... kind of deserve to get slapped right now. Yeah, no, th- we are at fault currently. And, like, the thing is, is this is people just profiting. Like, people can sell those pictures to the media. The media will pay for them. Because it's journalism, those people are protected. And that's the way the news goes. They're they're allowed to to report the, that, yeah. But uh, that shouldn't have ever been shared or sold, right? It sh- it shouldn't have been reported. They're allowed to though. Yeah, I, I mean they're protected under the freedom of press. But at the same time, sweet Lord Jesus, stop telling everyone everything all the time. Anything, everything, any time happens. There are some things that should be kept secret. Like quit it. Just stop. Yeah. Please. Like, let them do their jobs, and they'll tell us when they find something. Uh, Megan in the chat room says, new look, huh, Shawan? It's not that new. I mean, technically this time, yes, I only got it cut like three days ago, but my hair also was cut like this like a year ago. Yeah, he evolved about three days ago. you just been gone, Megan. You went off to Maine. Had to go be lame in Maine. Those don't actually rhyme, but it's real no. close. Yeah, no, no, not really. Whatever, I don't I don't even care anymore. Hey, Nathan. I'm Mr. Meeseeks, look at me! News is done, tell me your D&D idea. Actually, no, hang on, I got something else to say first. <laughs> it won't be because people might check out when you're talking about D&D. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, 
First off, everybody, the thing that I cared about in the last 24 hours is that it's Thursday, which means it's the last show for this week. We are having a three-day weekend, so everyone be safe and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Try to avoid stores because they are crazy. The other thing I wanted to remind everyone is that we go live on Facebook, and next week we are going to be starting our new time. And that time is going to, it says post-show like a million times. <laughs> there we go. Um, we're going to be starting our new time next week, starting Monday, Memorial Day, the 29th. We will go live on Facebook at 6 p.m. Alaska time. That means 7 p.m. on the East Coast, West Coast, so California, Washington, Oregon. 8 p.m. if you're mountain time, areas like Utah, Colorado, Idaho, etc. What about si Megan time? Uh, well, I, it depends because there's sections of the far East coast that are five hours ahead, but central time, Oklahoma and everything up and down, Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, all of those, it's going to be at 9 PM. And then on the East coast, so areas like Florida, New York, et cetera, those will be at 10 PM. And if you are f an out, if New York is an hour behind you, then it's going to be 11 PM your time. But I know that those locations are very, there's not many of those. Just, does that, that's what I cared about is I want to tell everyone to have a good Memorial Day weekend. If you are getting a three-day weekend, have fun and be safe. And if you want to catch us live, we will be live on Monday at 6 p.m. Alaska time. Look it up. Do the math. Okay, Nathan. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. All right, Nathan. Tell me about your new D&D &D idea. Okay, so it's, it's going to be an addition to an old idea. So I had that idea after seeing that meme about... Um, the guy who drains people of their blood for a magic sword, right? Uh, sure, yeah. So, that guy is going to be doing that because he wants to um, kill a specific person. He needs the power to do that, right? Sure. So, the setting is, it's going to be in a castle next to uh, a town. And the town is called Yig. And this town is a gnomish city at the base of the world tree. Um... The reason why it's at the base is because the gnomes are industrious people, so they go, um, like, chopping into the world tree and mining into it, making caverns in it, essentially, mm -hmm. um, so that they can mine all the wood, so that they can uh, use that for for crafting whatever they need. They also have, you know, um, a mine for actual metal as well, so there's they, they have as much resources as they can possibly get. Sure. Um, the thing is, though, is that they're... Uh, their city is going to be constantly attacked by druids because the druids really hate that they're doing that to the world tree. Makes sense. And the druids contacted this guy, the, this lord in his castle to to kill essentially all of the gnomes. And that's why he's making the sword because he needs the power to do it. Uh, be, if he ever does get to the point where he gets to make uh, the sword, I strongly recommend making the sword egotistical. So make it intelligent. Yeah, and yeah. if he makes it out of like, so I have a magical sword that is made of the blood of a per of one person, um, and it has the personality and memories of the person's blood that it was made out of. If it's made out of a bunch of people, you should have it constantly change personalities and stuff because it's portraying the people it's made out of. It would be like four hundred people. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, it just keeps rolling. Yep, like every hour, it just turns into someone different. Mm -hmm. You, you could be really rude, and sometimes it just screams bloody murder because it's scared. Yeah. False. So there, there are going to be factions that they can choose to, to, to um, take part of. They can take part of the gnomes, and they can go into the tree and stop uh, the druids that have infiltrated the tree. You can team up with the druids to help with the, uh, the lord of the castle to take down the gnomes. You can just be a, a standard adventuring team and do all of the above. Cool. I'm I'm kind of excited because um, because you have that that world that we always use with the the nine um, the, the nine layers. Yeah. Um, I kept telling Draven about it, and Draven wanted to create his own. So this is going to be the start of our own constantly evolving D and D world. Cool. I love using consistent campaigns. Mm -hmm. Like just because. It, it's a lot of the same reason why people like love using always using Forgotten Realms because it's recognizable areas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't care for Forgotten Realms, so I'm just I'm just really excited to name something like King Fizzlebottom. Sure, you can just go ham on it, man. Because they're gnomes, oh, man. And I just I want the gnomes to be like good people because they're like generally nice and and they they make things that are helpful for all of humanity. 
But I want them to also have this evil element where they're just like, they have to keep mining because they have to continuously put out this in industry and they're polluting the world tree and the world tree is dying and the druids are like, no, fucking stop. Do it. I like this idea. Yeah. You know what else I like? Hmm. Getting out of here to play some more video games. <laughs> yeah, sure. All yeah. right. Everybody, we're going to get out of here. Um, if you would like to help support the show, patreon.com slash daily internet. If you can spare a dollar a month, five dollars a month, it would help us immensely. Otherwise, give us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, anywhere that you might be listening to this if you're not watching us live on Facebook or catching the VODs on YouTube. Otherwise, you can follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All of those are at iReditCast. Or you can let us know what you want us to talk about by sending us an email, feedback.iredit at gmail.com, or say it by voice and just go and leave us a voicemail, 508-738-2278. Um, that's it, everybody. That is your 294th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And remember, everybody. Don't get, get <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Bye.